yet again to the Acid Trash Jamboree and to the beginnings of another mini-series or whatever you want to call it. In this video I'll be taking a look at a small handful of cassette releases from the collection, a format that I resisted the temptation to get too deeply into for the longest time, then gave in and went nuts for in the early 2010s. Okay, so the few tapes that I'll be showing today are all connected to the extremely fertile and prolific DIY electronic scene that emerged circa the late noughties in the wake of the popularity of artists like Animal Collective, Black Dice, James Ferraro, Emeralds, One O Tricks Point Never, as well as journalist David Keenan's so-called hypnagogic pop construct and the whole vaporwave thing that followed shortly after. This underground network mostly comprised of US-based labels and artists who generally promoted themselves via blogspot sites and on forums like the much-missed Fangs and Arrows. As we'll get on to, many of these acts were either synth or electric guitar based, usually in conjunction with arrays of effects pedals like loopers and delay units to take their music into heavily dreamy, trippy or liminal spaces with releases very often recorded directly to cassette for extra lo-fi disorientation. Some of the more well-known labels from this scene include Night People, Housecraft Recordings, Stunned Records, Hooker Vision, Excite Bike, Orange Milk Records, and European ventures like Sick Sick, who between them release literally hundreds of tapes in a very short space of time, before things slowly started to wind down and most of the people involved simply faded away back into obscurity. Again, this is another point that I'll be coming back to over the course of the video. Okay, so without further ado, let's see what's on the agenda today. So first up, we have Roped Off and their album is Waiting for Your Challenge. Now, Roped Off is, or was, the duo of Dave Doyen and Mike Haley. They were pretty active under this name between 2010 and 2017, even featuring on a split cassette released by my old label, but have unfortunately been quiet for the past few years. As far as I'm aware, though, they still present the Tabs Out podcast together and are intermittently active with their numerous solo projects. Okay, so How Zoo Mountain put out this tape in 2015, and yeah, basically it's an analog synth fetishist dream with two meaty 25 minute plus pieces, one per side, absolutely packed with sonic detail. The A side piece, This Is a Story of True Victory, firstly mixes up ominous deep drones with distorted old school computer game samples gradually up in the intensity before simmering down again into an extended section of minimalist spaceship music. The duo then start messily piling up assorted atonal squeaks and squeals onto this stark framework before some melodic, atmospheric Berlin school sequencer appears through the chaos, swirling around alongside streams of fizzing white noise and distressed yeti groans. Over on the B side, the track But The Road Is Long commences with a gaseous soup of sub-bass frequencies and glitches before airy drones and high-pitched wheedlings rudely push in to clear away this heavy, muzzy sonic fog. The piece then breaks down into ultra-quiet pulsing and bubbling, roped off evidently not afraid of keeping it low-key for extended periods of time. Be patient though and you'll be thoroughly rewarded as another persistent drone creeps in, followed by an agitated sounding sequencer pattern which fidgets away over ever thickening layers of noisy madness, after which the tape concludes with a brief chiptune theme. As I say, if you like experimental analogue synth music, particularly in the style of masters like Cluster, Conrad Schnitzler, Klaus Schulze and Tangerine Dream, then you really can't go wrong with this. Yeah, you could say it doesn't bring anything particularly new to the table, or that it's nothing we haven't heard before, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a sonic space that I very much like to occupy every so often. 
Plus, there are only so many albums out there by the aforementioned old guard. So yeah, the more the merrier. Next up, we have a split album from the projects Deep Magic and Mojave Triangles, released on the now defunct label Diatom Bath in 2016. Okay, so Deep Magic is one of the many monikers of Alex Gray, another artist who cranked out a lifetime's worth of stuff in the 2010s, then slowed down considerably, again to the point where it's quite likely that he's not even publicly active in music anymore. His side, entitled Real Air, opens with warm and inviting organ arpeggios which occasionally disorientate by warping slightly out of tune. Though on second thoughts, maybe that's just my deck playing up. But yeah, mostly just bob along nicely in the style of J.D. Emanuel's homespun minimalism. Hazy, heavenly synths soon join the fun, gradually getting busier and louder until you're well and truly in the blissed out drone zone before being cut off mid-flow and replaced with an extra-long, neo-New Age assemblage of crystalline tinkles and thoroughly dolphin-friendly waves of synth loveliness. Another ear-bending tape warp then leads us into the piece's concluding movement, which sounds like a loop of some emotive post-rock crescendo, slowly melting under the midday sun. Yeah, this is a kind of gorgeous, tear-jerking, cyclical melody that many have strived to come close to but never quite reach. And yeah, for me, this piece taps into that same elusive stream of magisterial melancholy as Birchville Cat Motel did on the magnum opus Beautiful Speck Triumph. Robert Thompson, aka Mojave Triangle's side, is much more aloof and mysterious. Entitled Yucatan Dreams and Aural Transients, it also appears to consist of around three distinct sections, opening with warbling, eerie synths which hover mesmerically like massed UFOs in the chilly night air, before the sound thickens up considerably as billowing, airy textures join the alien atonality, swooshing and swirling away feverishly, like the background music in some hellish liminal aquarium. The piece then simmers down again with a stretch of chiming sequence of minimalism, which Thompson colours and eventually smothers completely with gooey, phased-out drones, until the sound opens up once again into icily beautiful lattices of Reiki and sonic hypnosis. These flicker and pulse for what seems like an eternity, until Thompson chucks a proverbial spanner in the works, the piece faltering and glitching, then eventually crapping out for good, the whole thing clocking in at nearly 25 minutes. So yeah, an excellent, high-quality split of inspired electronic music. Yeah, this is definitely one to play to those uninformed sorts that write this scene off as being lazy and low effort. Okay, so on to a project known as Reed Beds, which was an alias of Carter Mullen, yet another fella who was quite active on the scene for a little while, founding the Calypso Hum label along the way before dropping off the face of the earth around a decade ago. First up, we have the self-titled effort from 2010, which was limited to just 25 hand-numbered copies. Now, Reed Beds was a project on the loop and delay-heavy, electric guitar-centric side of things, in the long lineage of players like Manuel Gotching and Robert Fripp. Now, I would imagine that the artist that inspired this particular crop of young players the most was Mark McGuire, who started off in the aforementioned group Emeralds in the mid-2000s, then went on to achieve a fair amount of solo success. So yeah, on the A side, we find Mullins slowly building up layers of post-rockish, clean-toned lines, very quiet and simple, melodically speaking, but still loaded with nostalgia and melancholy all the same. The loops aren't locked into strict rhythmic patterns, so they do kind of tumble over one another as they cycle around, but thankfully, the piece never devolves into a clumsy mess over the course of its 20 minutes, with occasional unexpected sour notes rising to the top of this otherwise most blissful lo-fi journey. Over on side B, we find a series of shorter tunes, 
starting off with a much louder, distorted piece, with Mullin mostly jabbing away at a couple of wishy-washy, psychedelic chords, which generate ringing harmonic overtones as they grind away. This is followed by some dreamy desert island fantasy music, all gorgeous slide guitar figures and obscure rustlings that almost sound like waves lapping on the shore, before we're transported back to reality with a slightly pensive sounding loop fidgeting away restlessly over a field recording of raindrops hitting a window pane. For some reason, Mullen decided to leave this piece otherwise unadorned, which is a shame actually as it never really goes anywhere as a result. After which, the tape closes out on a pleasant fragment of chiming, clean tone pastoralism. On to Heirloom Rust Garden from 2012, side A of which features further extended sections of ASMR friendly rustling, interspersed with assorted flavours of clean tone string loopage. From sparse and graceful lines, pitched somewhere between African highlife music and the solo from the Strangler's Golden Brown, to poignant, freeform cosmic drift, then closing out with some sweet, unhurried delay pedal frippery. Then Side B starts off in that neo New Age zone that I touched on earlier, with synthy textures bubbling away alongside backwards glitches and yet more lo fi rustling before moving into further sections of pretty echo guitar and cascading loops, again with a taste of African music, though this time also bringing to mind the self-titled Aerial M album. Yeah, lovely stuff on the whole. This one is quite possibly my favourite of the handful of Reed Beds titles that I own. Anyway, by the time of Basement Grotto, also from 2012, Mullin had seemingly invested in a fancy new pedal or two, processing his signature loops to the point where only a fraction of the A-side even sounds like a guitar anymore. He mostly keeps the tracks brief, structuring them more like the catchy early electronic miniatures of Asmus Tietchens perhaps, or Cluster Circa Zuckerzeit, rather than the rambling, more improvisational long-form pieces of his other releases. Your Hand in Mine is of particular note, with staccato harmonics over rich organ-like textures, whilst Reverie Sheep is another gem pitched somewhere between old-school industrial music and dreamy New Age stylings. On the flip side, Bedside comprises mostly of strange creaks and groans, some of which are suspiciously flatulent in nature, before the trio of Refrain, Windowsill, and the rain comes whenever I wish, see Mullin return to his trademark sound for a few pleasant minutes, the last of these aching with a nocturnal sadness. Closer, Petal Steel, the longest piece here at five and a half minutes, combines the album's two approaches, neatly mixing deep electronic pulses with further melancholic wafts of guitar, which slowly build in volume before once again taking on a more synthesizer-esque timbre. The last tape I'll be discussing here is 2013's Vascular Harmony, which came out on Canada's Hobo Cult Records. Now, this was a label run by Hobo Cubes, also known as Francesco Di Gallo, one of the few people strongly connected to the whole late 2000s, early 2010s scene that's actually still active today, albeit with a new label, Interzone Editions. Anyway, both sides here are taken up by single untitled tracks, and yeah, the A-side is about as minimal as it gets. Yeah, Mullin sets up a pretty, frippertronic style wash of blissed out heavenly guitar, then more or less just leaves it as is, raising the volume a touch along the way, but otherwise just letting it hover angelically for 20 odd minutes quite nice, but I can't help but see it as a wasted opportunity. Yeah, with just a subtle extra embellishment or two, this could have been turned into something quite special and beautiful, but as it is, it's just kind of there and it starts to outstay its welcome. Thankfully then, the piece on the B-side is a touch more happening. Granted, it's also based on a single droning loop, but at least Mullin remembers to do something with this one, adding flickering modal flourishes and eventually some splashy, watery sounds as the track nears its end, 
the whole thing playing out like some kind of peaceful, zen-like electronic raga. So, nothing mind-blowingly amazing here. Yeah, I'd imagine even the world's most passionate, ambient guitar completists would struggle to get too worked up over this tape, but it's certainly not terrible by any means. So yeah, this is just a tiny snapshot of what I have lurking away in my tape collection. Whilst these were all released in small quantities and are long sold out physically, luckily you can still find most of the music online on the artist's Bandcamp sites. As I said, I do have a lot of stuff from this lo-fi electronic scene, as well as a ton more cassette curiosities in a myriad of musical styles, which I hope to revisit soon and talk about on the channel. So if that sounds your thing, please do subscribe to be kept up to date and feel free to take a look around where you'll find loads more videos about strange and underground music and films. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time on the Acid Trash Jamboree.